win tonight, he'll become just the 17th coach in history with 700 wins. The Cameron Crazies will be revved up and ready to give Coach K all the energy to achieve the milestone. Can the Rockets spoil the party? Find out next on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. We make no Cameron Indoor Stadium, the site of game two of ACC Sunday Night Hoops, and they're looking for number 700 tonight for Coach K on his own floor in Krzyzewskiville. It's the Toledo Rockets, favorites in the Mid-America Conference, coming in to take on number nine, Duke, we're live. Hello, everyone, I'm Tim Brando, welcoming you to the game two of our Sunday Night Doubleheader, and Dan Bonner is by my side. And Dan, when you start talking about 700, that truly is special for any active coach in college basketball today. But J.J. Redick is a pretty special talent to help get you there. Oh, there isn't any question about that. Keep in mind that J.J. Redick is one of the most lethal offensive weapons in college basketball. He's a guy, I think, who has to perform well for Duke to play well. In the last two games, Duke has played very well, and you can see Redick's numbers, no surprise there. However, Duke has to be more than J.J. Redick in the perimeter. I think the key to this Blue Devil season may be the inside guys, Sheldon Williams and Shavlik Randall. I think they've got to be very, very solid for Duke to get to where the Blue Devils want to go, and quite frankly, under Mike Krzyzewski, are used to going. The Toledo Rockets out of the Mid-America Conference have really taken on a very rigorous schedule this year on the road. They've played some outstanding teams, but Keith Triplett is really one outstanding player. He's the Mid-America Conference preseason player of the year. One of a good group of guards for the Toledo Rockets, Triplett the best among them. He had a very fine season last year, has started a little slowly this year as those numbers would indicate, but he had 28 points in his last game. He leads an outstanding backcourt for Toledo. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by Jeep Rated Trail Capability. Don't go off road without it. And by Dickies, a legend in work. Let's take a look at our Staples starting lineups for Toledo. The senior is triplet, four sophomores, all very talented, coming along well for Coach Stan Joplin. The Rockets starting lineup after one big victory at home against Nevada and three road losses for the Blue Devils of Duke. Their starting five looks this way. Noteworthy that uh, Shavlik Randolph is not in the starting lineup. David McClure gets his third start of the season. They've been expecting more from Randolph. They're going to go small early on tonight and see how Randolph plays off the bench. And let's take a look at our Jeep game plan, Dan. Toledo in their previous games have started very slowly, gotten behind. They have to start well, and they've got to finish. By that, I mean they have to finish plays. They can't be turning over. I think they have to shoot a high percentage. And we showed you before the game, Shusevskyville. Well, Duke has to be Basketville. Uh, I think a lot of depends upon their percentages, their shooting percentage, their three-point percentage, their three-point or their free throw percentage. And much of that, of course, is tied to the way they play. Can they get out in transition? Can they force the action on the inside and get to the free throw line? Stan Joplin in his ninth year, a protege of Judd Heathcote, a part of that Brian Gregory, Tom Izzo group in East Lansing, has recruited in that area for quite some time. Hit a buzzer beater back in 1979-80 season, the last time they tasted the NCAA dance. And the wow. opening tip is control to the Rockets. And a quick over and back. Hope that's uh, not an ominous sign for the Road <laughs> Warriors tonight as you look at Mike Krzyzewski flanked by Johnny Dawkins and Steve Wojciechowski, Chris Collins, the rest of that coaching staff. And uh, 30 years, of course, uh, prior to coming to Duke, Tom Butters took the shot at a coach that's coming off a losing season at West Point. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. Man-to-man -man defense for Toledo. Deontay Howell at the moment matched up against J.J. Reddick. Keep your eye on that particular matchup. Sheldon Williams backing in. Nice defensive work by Florentino Valencia. has been the most consistent rocket so far. And right away, you see the quickness of Keith Triplett using the window, and it's 2-0 Toledo. Toledo is a team that likes to get out and score. Triplett, Ingram, 
how give them a very nice combination in the backcourt. They can put points on the board. They can shoot the ball. Duke can't afford to turn it over either. Another deflection, this one by Alan Pinson, the sophomore from Hebron, Michigan. From Hebron, Ohio, I beg your pardon. Man to man defense for the Devils. Triplet with the dump down to the man they call Tino. Good cross court pass. Baseline to baseline, and it's 4 0 yeah, as Pinson puts it in. Stan Joplin told us earlier today, Dan, at the shoot around, we've got to find a way to keep Duke's guards from going off early. That would be the key to the game from his standpoint. Big key also, we mentioned they've started very slowly in their previous four games, but they've jumped out on top here this evening. Williams. Valencia tried to draw the charge, but the flop was to no avail. Justin Ingram operating at the point. Valencia is only six feet five, Tim. He's going to have a tough time matching up inside against Williams unless Toledo gives him some help. Triplet off the dribble. Oh, I'd say he's in rhythm now. But he is very, very dangerous. You're going to have to put pressure on him. That was a little bit too easy. Coming into the night's game, Triplet uncharacteristically cold from the perimeter. Two of 19 from three-point range. Nice dump off to McClure. Can't finish. Ewing keeping it alive, and McClure runs it down. Ewing left free. Rebound to Ingram. Numbers for Toledo, four on two. Oh, Howe was shooting it before he caught it, Tim Howe, a very good three-point shooter. Deontay Howell, sophomore from Jackson, Michigan. Two and a half minutes gone, and the underdogs from the Mid-America Conference, solid early. Nice move inside, and again, Ingram with a wonderful dish inside. One of the things that Stan Joplin was worried about was whether or not his kids could handle the Duke pressure particularly early. Well, thus far, they have neutralized the Duke pressure. Well, to some extent, maybe playing on the road against the likes of Vanderbilt in East Carolina, serving this team well. A good overplay again defensively, and Triplett comes away with a pick. Toledo four for four from the floor. And a rare unforced error, but a good start for the Rockets. And they have done it by being able to get the ball inside. That's an excellent penetration. Howell slips free underneath. The ability to beat the Duke guys on the perimeter has been important. Here's what we're talking about with Toledo, Tim. This is how they've started their last four games. You can see three losses before the win. They knew they could not start that way in this game. And with an 8-2 lead, obviously they have not. Shavalik Randolph just into the game during the timeout. And uh, he turned it over. His foot was on the end line. And Randolph, even though he has not played as well as the Duke people would like, there's a turnover. His size, I think, is going to help him. Reddick can't connect. Randolph very aggressive on the glass, but lost it out of bounds. Tim, we mentioned Toledo. Pinson is 6'10", but he's a thin 6'10". There's Shavlik Randolph. You can see how he ended the season. That's why there were high hopes for him this season. He hasn't matched those numbers. But Pinson is a very thin 6'10", and Val Valencia is only 6 feet 5, so you get the two big guys in there, and that's going to be a real problem for the Rockets. Triplet. Nice oh, pass. Man, what a pass to Valencia. 10-2. And the Cameron crazies have been quieted early on. Almost four minutes gone here at Cameron. The story early on has been the solid Toledo backcourt oh. play. Their quickness has neutralized what Duke is trying to do, but there's that Duke advantage. And again, what has happened is Toledo has been able to get free from their Duke defenders and forcing the other defenders to come and help, leaving guys open, and they're finding them. Valencia picked up the foul, his first. Look at that, perfect from the floor. Hard to do better than that. Demarcus Nelson has checked into the game along with Randolph, number 21 for the Blue Devils. Sort of a strong upper body guard, a guy that can beat you physically in the backcourt driving to the basket. Here's an example. Tried to force it a bit, and quality defense by Toledo here at the outset. An eight-point lead for the upstarts from the Mid-America. The Rocketmen are from out of town early. Meet 
Bob. Bob went to Arizona, his friend went to Nebraska, and their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels, FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. They lurk in the water, waiting for a fight. It's the run for the FLW Championship. Get caught in the action, emotion, and adrenaline. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN. Tune into Fox Sports for the best sports coverage around. Then, let the new FoxSports.com on MSN take you beyond the field. Log on today for up-to-the-minute headlines, real-time scores on every page, hot sports opinions from your favorite Fox Sports personalities, tons of free video, cool interactive features, play fantasy games, and get everything you need to win with expert analysis from the sporting news. Experience a new world of sports. FoxSports.com on MSN. X marks a daring pursuit of the unknown. Unpredictable. Unforgettable. X marks questions that need to be explored. Stories that need to be told. X marks the destination for adventures so gripping you never let go. X marks Explorer Sundays only on the National Geographic Channel. Dare to explore. Toledo leads by eight, and Dan, I've, it's been a while since I've seen a Blue Devil defense carved up quite like this. We talked about Toledo's backcourt, and they've played very well in transition, triplet with the basket, then triplet just with the great crossover dribble, then the penetration frees up Owl on the inside. So the Toledo guards have been able to get out in transition and get penetration. And this is a very interesting graphic. Let's set this up here. The MAC, the Mid-America Conference, that's how many bids they've had to the NCAA yeah. tournament in the years represented versus how many bids the ACC has had. And you can see that single MAC participant has been the conference tournament champion. Yeah. The ACC gets that large bid. The MAC doesn't, but this is a very solid Toledo team. J.J. Reddick taking it to the hoop and draws the contact. And we should mention, Toledo's won 20 games. They've gone to NITs, but... Wally Zerbiak's been in the league a time or two. Central Michigan's had a run. So this is a league that's done well with their one bid from time to time in the NCAA. And one of the reasons you go on the road and play the kind of schedule that they've played is to build up that RPI. So yep. if you don't win your conference tournament championship, maybe you can get an at-large bid. Well, the Rockets are staggering rating for playing tough opposition is uh, on the hot 100. And moving up fast. There's Stan Joplin. And your meet uh, coaches that came up under uh, Judd Heathcote. There are a number of success stories. Tommy Izzo, Stan Heath, Stan Joplin as well. Sammy Vijegas just coming into the game for Toledo. This guy is a real three-point shooter. Tom Crean is another at Marquette. Here's Nelson. Quick out with Toretic. Ewing pumps. I gave, uh, Tim, a much more aggressive Duke team coming out of that timeout, oh. driving the ball to the basket, now getting after it harder defensively. It was a shock treatment timeout in many respects. Mike Krzyzewski was giving him an earful. Tim, you don't want to make any excuses, but keep in mind, Duke is coming out of the exam break and a little lethargic at the start, but no lethargy right here. The hustle, they're scrambling after the ball. Toledo may be relaxing a little bit after getting that 10 to 2 lead. Can't relax in here against the Blue Devils. Quick double team of triplet. Good outlet. Finds Allen Pinson. That's a player control foul. How Tim, many times have we seen that in this building? Tim, I'll tell you what, the key there is they make the wrong guy handle the ball. You don't want your 6'10 center driving the ball to the basket, and that's no. why. You say the block charge is a tough call to make. That was not. He just ran right over Shelton Williams. Pinson's got to give the ball up rather than try to drive it to the basket. Toledo will not be as deep, obviously, as the Blue Devils, but this is not one of the deeper teams that Mike Krzyzewski's had in recent memory. Williams in traffic, and it's a tie ball. Nice work defensively by Allen Pinson. Had a lot of leather. Sophomore, Lakewood High School in Hebron, Ohio. 
thus far, despite the Duke advantage on the inside, Toledo has defended well. Good help by Pinson. He's going to have to help Valencia all night long. Now Pinson's going to pick up a foul, pushing against Shavlik Randolph. And there's that extra pressure on the Toledo interior defense that we talked about that's created by Shavlik Randolph coming into the game. Kareem Milson will come into the game, senior from Toronto, Ontario, prepped at uh, Grand High School in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Pinson sits with two fouls. A lot of times in non-conference games, uh, front lines for opposing teams run out. Play. Oh, that's a wonderful pass from Reddick to Williams. And the landlord brings Duke to within one. Seven unanswered and a quick foul. Foul's going to be against Nelson for the Duke Blue Devils. Reddick doing a nice job taking the ball to the basket. They're very concerned about his shooting ability, so he's going right around him, and that time created a nice opening for Sheldon Williams. Excellent pass. Reddick more than just a shooter. Toledo sprinted to an eight-point lead, and they've been shut out since. Ingram taking it right to the rack, knocked out of bounds, last touch by Duke. I think that Toledo should be very careful about taking the ball all the way to the basket in the transition game. Sheldon Williams, an excellent shot blocker. Toledo's got some good three-point shooters. Maybe in transition, they ought to be drawing the defense inside, kicking it out for threes. Triplett has four points early on. A leader in traffic, tough shot, taken down by Williams. Ewing looking deep. Randolph with the recovery. Randolph needs to power that ball back up to him and draw the foul. He's playing against the 6-5 guy. Well, Valencia, a good defender, but certainly no match for Williams inside. And just again, like that, yep. just like that. You get the ball inside, the defenders are there, but they're not as big as you are. Power the ball to the basket. Blue Devils by one, triple it again off the back iron. Nelson with a stop and go. May have gotten away with a push. And then the foul inside the painted area. You have to defend the perimeter threats for the Duke Blue Devils. This is a nice pass inside. Only Williams can catch it. He comes down with the ball. The two players who are guarding him simply are not as big as he is. Milson at six feet eight, and Williams only an inch taller at six nine. But Williams much, much bulkier. Just pushes his way to the goal. Kareem Milson got that foul, sending uh, Nelson to the line. Freshman from Elk Grove, California. You know, when they lost Livingston, who decided to play someplace else besides Duke, Nelson quickly moved up on the charts in terms of uh, freshman of influence. Randolph leads the game, as does Williams, Melchioni, and Reggie Love coming into the game for the first time for the Blue Devils. Now, isn't this an interesting lineup that Duke has out on the court? Reggie Love, Lee Melchioni, Nelson, along with Ewing and Dockery. Toledo, who was four for four in the first three minutes and 45 seconds, 0 for four since. Tim, that, that stat is a direct result of shot selection. The Duke defense has really picked up the tempo. Their offense has been more efficient, thus denying Toledo those transition opportunities. They actually got it to five out of five before they got cold. Duke defense really pushing out now. Payne with a good bounce pass inside. Nothing coming easily for Milson. And the outlet to Dockery. Melchioni is a power forward with a face-up game. He can be matchup problems at times. There's Nelson. Long rebound corralled by Love. To Ewing. The iron on time, Love misses from point blank range. And Kashif Payne on a run out. In traffic, draws the foul from Ewing. Payne's a little mighty mine out of Chester, Pennsylvania. Boy, he sure is. And this is where Toledo had success earlier in the game. Getting the ball out in transition, Payne at 5-9, taking the ball to the goal. Tough kid out of the Philadelphia area. 
really going to be a key for Toledo. The backup point guard, something that Toledo suffered last year in the game. Their, their offensive efficiency really dropped off when Ingram left the game, but with Payne this year, they're hoping that won't be the case. J.J. Reddick comes back in for Demarcus Nelson. And Payne actually keyed the second half comeback against Nevada at home for the lone victory that the Rockets have this year. They're down two with under 13 minutes left. Reddick with a little stop and go. That's a tough shot. Tough pass thrown away that time by Keontae Howell. He was looking for a cut, just got a bit over anxious with it. And you know, with the pressure the Duke defense can exert, lots of people come into this building and get yeah. a little over anxious. No signs, even during this run by Duke. Remember, they were down 10 to 2. So they've outscored this oh, nice team 11 defense. to 1. Great defensive work by Toledo. I don't see their eyes glazed over. Triplet. Off the front iron, Keontae Howell rejected. One of many by the ACC leader, Reddick. Well, that is a great job blocking out by Valencia on the inside. He's fundamentally sound. He may be only 6'5", but he knows how to box out. Blue Devils getting more than they bargained for in search of 700. Baseball is a fun sport, but it's a lot more fun when you get good and when you start winning over your competition. So if you're serious about getting good, you should be serious about getting the Swing Away Hitting Machine. The Swing Away Hitting Machine is used by all 30 Major League Baseball teams to improve player skill, build strength, and increase power, all in a safe and efficient package. And now you can have the same training system for yourself. This is the exact same system that Major League All-Stars like Rafael Palmeiro are using to increase their batting average. I use a swing away. It has helped me, and it will help you too. Swing away increases hitting power and allows you to practice in all pitch locations of the strike zone. The swing away hitting machine is completely safe to use and can be used indoors or outdoors. It folds easily for storage and can convert to practice other skills such as pitching and fielding. The swing away can also change to softball mode. You know, when I was a kid, it was you have a few balls, you toss them up and hit them, and then have to go shag them yourself and hit back and forth. Whereas now, I mean, in a five-minute period, you can get, you know, 50 swings in. There it is. The proof is on the field. As you'll see, your batting average soar and your hand-eye coordination skyrocket. The Swing Away is the hitting trainer of choice for Major League All-Stars and the only guaranteed way to achieve your true batting potential. Buy a Swing Away for your daughter, your son, or your team and make them a better hitter. Get good with Swing Away. Call toll-free to find out how you can try the Swing Away hitting system in your home for as little as $49. It's sure to improve your game and comes with an unconditional 30-day money-back guarantee to back it up. No other baseball swing trainer comes close to the original Swing Away. That's why all 30 major league teams and over 35 All-Stars are using it today. When you call, ask how to qualify for priority shipping and these extra bonuses. So what are you waiting for? Get Swing Away and get good. Call 1-800-801-6521 to try the Swing Away training system for as little as $49 per month. That's 1-800-801-6521. Weeknights on FSN. It's an outstanding show. The best damn sports show, period. A one-hour frat party with irreverent skits, insightful interviews, and sharp locker room banner. It's the best damn sports show, period. 9 and 11, only on FSN. Duke leading by two. Tim Brando, Dan Potter, happy to have you with us. Over eight minutes gone by here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Here's the Jacobs dumping it down. Another outstanding pass, but an extra step taken by Kareem Nelson. Tell you, I love the way these guards move the ball for Toledo. The problem that they're having is since that 10 to 2 spurt in the first four minutes of the game, Duke has been doing a very good job making it tough on those guards. Yeah, they're not, a, they don't have the room that they had in the first four minutes. Nice alley you. Ewing to the landlord. Sheldon Williams gives them a four point lead. Williams now four of five. The rest of the Blue Devils only one for 11. 
Or was that a pick by Milson or what? It's taken Dockery a long time to pick himself back up and get to the other end of the floor. Sheldon Williams doing a great job getting himself in position. The penetration draws the defender. Nobody rotates down to cover Sheldon Williams. And I'll tell you what, somebody's got to guard that big guy. Can't leave him alone next to the basket because, as he just showed you, he finishes very effectively. Toledo in a little bit of a danger zone here. I think they've got to get something going offensively, and that's too tough a shot. Yeah, to see Payne. Couldn't get it to fall. Jagus on the floor. Triplet is out of the game. Triplet has not played in a while. Melchioni. Rebound taken down by Florentino Valencia. They call him Tino. Well, he telegraphed that pass. Nelson made him pay. Duke's defense at the moment doing a really good job making guys handle the ball who don't want to handle the ball. Deontay Howell took steps, and again, credit the defense of Nelson. Stan Joplin's guys started very well, but they're struggling right now. Valencia just worried about getting rid of the ball. Nelson sees the pass, takes it, and scores. This is something that concerned the Toledo coaching staff. Duke's ability to create turnovers and turn them into easy baskets. Toledo's last field goal came six minutes ago. Well, remember, it was 10 to 2 Toledo. Randolph keeping it alive. Good reach in and a deflection, but he gathers it back. All of the Toledo players have gone the other end, and they miss from point blank range. Vijagas. Ball rebound, triplet. triplet back on the floor. Gets it out to Payne. Valencia, baseline extended, and that ends the drought of better than six minutes. 17-13, that's a big basket. It is a big basket, and impressively for Toledo, they've had that six-minute drought, and yet they only trail by four. That doesn't happen often in this building, particularly when you're a non-conference opponent. Nelson working in on Payne. Good hands by Payne, knocking it away. Nelson at 6-3. Payne at only 5'9". Nelson trying to take advantage of that mismatch, but you got to be careful. You don't want to occupy the ball too much, even when you're trying to take advantage of a mismatch on the inside. Randolph from deep. Williams. And the foul is going to go against Valencia. He got that wing out there just a bit too far and was called for the push. And that's second. his second personal foul, and that's a problem for Toledo. Valencia, their leading scorer on the year, their best inside guy. And now he's going to continue to try to guard Sheldon Williams, and he just picked up his third foul. Yeah. Well, that's something Stan Joplin absolutely cannot afford. Joplin has a freshman center. Harris Carolumbus. Young man that's got a uh, dislocated shoulder. He's a 6'10 youngster that uh, will be available for him in a couple of weeks. And will uh, give that man a little time to breathe during games once they get into Mid-America Conference play. There he is. Another big body, as you mentioned, 6'10 freshman. And in this game, you need all the bodies you can get. <laughs> Toledo actually has pretty good depth, particularly in the backcourt. Without question, his legacy may be, and he has many, I'm sure, but he'll be known for that. All-time leading free throw percentage shooter. Broke his own record when he got into the 50s last year. Consecutively. Ingram takes it himself. And Nelson on the putback is fouled. He is fouled by Dockery, but the key I think that you see out here, Mike Krzyzewski's defense after that first timeout has come out and contested everything.
Not, not quite 11 minutes gone by here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils were down 10-2, three and a half minutes deep. And then a six-minute drought for the Toledo Rockets allowed the Blue Devils to take control of the game, and they're up by six. And they need to get the freebies. Now, Bill's opportunities come up. Nilsson hadn't made a free throw all year, Tim. Reddick was trying to get the floor cleared, but had to give it up. There's Randolph. They want him to become more assertive. He did not get the start tonight. 21-13, triplet on the open floor. And on the putback, Milson, the senior, Kareem Milson. Good tip in by Milson, but again, Toledo has fallen into the trap of taking the first available shot, even if it's not a good one. Off the curl, Reddick stripped by Vijegas. It's interesting, Vijegas not noted as a solid, a particularly solid defensive player for Toledo. His strength is on the offensive end, but here he draws a very difficult defensive assignment. Well, Vijegas uh, will have to play. He'll log a lot of minutes tonight. Too strong for Nelson. Well, good blockout. Antoine Curry with that first rebound. Ingram has it knocked away by Dockery. Boy, that is great hustle by Dockery, Tim. He went for the steal on the other end, was out of the play, but rather than jog up and just let Toledo do whatever they wanted, he chased Ingram down and knocked the ball out of bounds. This is just great hustle. Dockery goes for the ball. Now watch him, he doesn't stop. He just turns around and sprints down the court, finally catching Ingram, who thought he was loose, but was mistaken. And a foul. Triplet. Nice job by Triplet. The defense pressured him out on the perimeter. He took the ball to the basket. And watch, he doesn't try to go all the way. The pressure comes. He steps inside the pressure and stops and takes that mid-range jump shot. DeMarcus Nelson picked up the foul. Toledo recently has been trying to take the ball to the basket all the time, and Duke has been very effective defending that. You, know, you love seeing veteran players, Dan, in college basketball that have the quality in between game, and I believe Triplett possesses that. 21 to 18, eight minutes left here in the opening half. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner, ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Off the ball, Reddick trying to keep up. Or the uh, Jake is trying to keep up with Reddick, and he picks up the foul. <laughs> Rockets trying to hang in there at Cameron Indoor Stadium on what they hope is a history-making evening. a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. 
This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Duke leads by three. One of the many jerseys hanging from the Raptors belongs to Shane Battier. He knows about the passion of his old coach. He had the same passion and the same hunger for, for winning ball games and, and playing good basketball. Um, and it's, it's, it's truly amazing. He's one of the few coaches to, to have that, that passion for over such a long period of time. Dan, I was talking to Mike uh, before the game. Look at those numbers. Pretty incredible. And you know, he does coach every game as though it were his last. <laughs> he really does. We saw some of that passion and intensity in that first time out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did we ever. He told me that uh, this team, like every team, is different. There are three solid guys that he knows exactly what they're going to deliver just about every night. Reddick, Ewing, and and obviously inside Williams. Last year, it was almost as if he had seven starters. Though this team may not be as talented, those pieces around the three solid guys will likely come together between now and January. Triplet. Shadowed by Reddick. Payne finds Triplett off the screen. Can't get it to go. Pulled down by David McClure. That was a good defensive series for Duke. What the Duke defense, they, 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 they really pressure you on defense. Just force you a little further out than you want to go. And again, uh, Daniel Ewing going over the top. Picking up the foul, showing some sportsmanship. Talked about that Duke pressure. You can see Toledo jumping to the 10 to 2 lead by shooting five for five. But then they went six minutes without a field goal. Duke went on the big run. And you got to credit the Duke defense for that. It's not just because they steal the ball, but they really keep the pressure on you. Force you just a few feet further away from the basket than you like to operate. A shot clock question right at the moment. The shot clock had not been reset on the foul. It has been reset now. There we go. We lost a couple of seconds. Uh, 714 should be on the clock. And it is now. So Deontay Howell will trigger it in and does. It says something for Toledo when you surrender 17 to one runs and yet you're only two possessions down. Triplet on the wing. Not there. Pulled down by Williams. That was a very good shot opportunity, though. Obviously, you're not going to make them all, but that was a much better shot opportunity for Toledo than the last time down the court. Very good offensive execution that time by the Rockets. Williams already has seven boards for the Blue Devils. Dockery, known more as a defensive specialist a year ago, has improved offensively. Sometimes uh, the best offensive move is throwing it up so Williams can go get it. And I don't think that was that was something that Dockery considered. I think it was something he considered on that play. Excuse me, Tim, because he saw the big guy come to help out, and he knew if he got it up on the rim, then Williams has a shot at it. That's what he's known for, right there. <laughs> Again, Toledo now in another danger zone here. You have got to put points on the board where that Duke defense will just eat you alive. Well, Dockery slapping it away. Trying for three in a row. This is just solid one-on-one -on -one pressure on the ball. The crossover by Payne unsuccessful as Dockery's quick hands get in there and steal the ball. Rasheed Payne is on the floor along with Howell, Triplett, Ingram, and Milson. Ingram dumps it out to Keontae Howell. And those perimeter jumpers just not falling. Reddick with a little Marcus Haynes act. Yes! <laughs> and a foul by Reddick. And Reddick, I think he, and I think he got hurt, yes. I think he turned an ankle.
This is a great hustle play by Redick on the rebound, then the behind-the-back dribble to avoid the charge, Ooh. then the spin move on the inside. <laughs> it's a highlight reel in one play, and now he's going for the steal. No, he didn't turn his ankle. He got smacked in the side of the head. Lee Melchioni will come in for him, taking a look at his eyes. I don't know that Redick has to be able to see. He's just got that radar to shoot the ball. He knows where the basket is. The most fundamentally sound with the stroke, perhaps in all of college basketball. First double-digit lead for Duke, 29 to 18. Howell on the dribble drive. They just cannot buy one, and that can happen to you here in Durham. I think the reason is pretty good defensive pressure. You get by the first line and you get somebody like Sheldon Williams back there. That thought occupies your mind as you shoot the ball. Randolph working on Howell, dumps it inside. And uh, DeMarcus Nelson gets the contact and we'll get to the free throw line. Tim, ever since that first time out, when Toledo led 10-2, to two, the Duke Blue Devils have been extremely aggressive on offense. They have really been attacking, not only throwing the ball inside, but penetrating inside off the dribble, really putting the Toledo defense in difficult situations. And Stan Joplin, he doesn't really have any options right at the moment. His best offensive player, Valencia, on the bench with foul trouble. I think there may be some blood on Sheldon Williams' elbow, and that's why he's coming out on his forearm. And uh, Love is checking in for him, Reggie Love. That may be the best defense that Toledo has been able to muster against him tonight. <laughs> Make him bleed, send him to the bench. Toledo was uh, 5 of 5 to open the game. They're 3 out of 18 cents from the floor. And again, a lot of that has to do with the types of shots they were attempting early in the game. Easy layups in transition. However, after that first four-minute period, Duke has really done a nice job contesting everything Toledo has tried to do. This young man, Nelson, committed to Duke before the end of his sophomore year in high school. J.J. Reddick coming back in for him. Brown responds. Boy, Nelson has had a solid first half. Yes, Those has. numbers we showed you just before he made that free throw, a very fine contribution. Rasheed Payne trying to deal with Dockery. Just look how hard Toledo has to work to even get their offense yeah. started. And Love induces the over and back with his defensive show. Boy, he just steps out and Ingram simply dribbles the but loses control of the dribble and it goes into the backcourt. It's another violation. Looked like one of those drills he had when he was uh, with the Green Bay Packers before <laughs> September. <laughs> what did you do with a blocking dummy? Oh, he made the last cut. Randolph. And the rebound control to Antoine Curry. It's been a while since we've heard. Inside, Howell finally gets it, and again, triplet drew the double team and gave it up. 31 to 20. Nice work by triplet, and the push by Melchioni. It'll go the other way. Quick hands of Keith Triplet. Mike disagrees. Sheldon Williams will come back onto the floor, replacing Love. Mike Krzyzewski, of course, not the most objective observer <laughs> in that particular situation. But I'll tell you what, I have been impressed thus far with Triplett. He has been yes. as advertised as far as I'm concerned. He has shown very, very good poise here early in the game. But he's an interesting story, too. This is a young man that was a partial qualifier coming out of high school. His granddad, Mel Triplett, was a star fullback, had his jersey retired at Toledo in the 50s. This young man had to overcome a learning disability, got an additional year's worth of athletic eligibility, and has really made the most of it. Quiet, he leads by example, as Coach Stan Joplin told us today. Well, he's set a solid example tonight, seven points, and when he has had the ball, a couple of assists, things have happened for Toledo on offense. Now they've got to dig in on the defensive end. Reddick, the jump stop dish, right to Shev, and Randolph lays it in. 
When you can score like Reddick can score, you draw an awful lot of attention, and Reddick, very intelligent in finding the open man. Really doesn't force anything. Pain. On the wing and put down by Antoine Curry, his first three-pointer of the year. 33-25. some of his size against Ingram. Gives it up to Williams. Triplet the rebound. Payne giving it up to Curry. Why not? Oh, you got to be kidding. Uh, <laughs> you I make mean, your first one and you're like, I got to go again. That shot was really, really a deep shot. That was not a particularly good shot. And Toledo had an opportunity to cut the lead to yeah. six. Yeah, I think he got a little overzealous after that first three fell for him. Melchione pops out. He's got a face-up game. That's what Coach K wants to see from him, a power forward that's a matchup problem on the perimeter. Oh, that's great hustle and by Melchione. Answers defensively. More floor, floor burns for Dukies. That's what that man demands. And it's helped him claim 699. He'd like to get the 700 tonight. One by one. They step forward. A nurse. A teacher. A homemaker. And lives are saved. But the problem is enormous. Every three seconds. One person dies. Another three seconds. One more. The situation is so desperate in parts of Africa. Asia. Even America. That aid groups. Just as they did for the tsunami. Are uniting. As one. Acting. As one. We can beat extreme poverty. Starvation. AIDS. But we need your help. One more person. Letter. Voice. Will mean the difference between life and death. For millions of people. Please join us. By working together. Americans have an unprecedented opportunity. We can make history. We can start to make poverty history. One. By one. By one. Please visit one at this address. We're not asking for your money. We're asking for your voice. Major League Baseball on Fox. And he can keep on running to New York. That ball is gone. Can you Your baseball memories live forever. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. This year's premier events are only on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball every Saturday on your local Fox station. They lurk in the water, waiting for a fight. It's the run for the FLW Championship. Get caught in the action, emotion, and adrenaline. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN. You take a look at our uh, staple summary. Uh, Toledo came out a blazing, then the defense picked up, and I've been impressed as you have with Triplett, the Mid-America Conference player of the year in the preseason. Certainly has been solid. I think another big key for Duke, you, we talked about it before the game, that they had an advantage on the inside with Shelton Williams, and they certainly used that advantage. O'Shea Russell is coming to the game for the first time, number five for the Rockets. He along with Payne, Deontay Howell, Triplett, and Nelson on the floor for Toledo. Quick trap. Good find by Payne. Howell corrals it. And puts it in with one hand. What great recovery by, by Howell. A lot of guys would lose their poise under that pressure when they fumbled the basketball, but he collected himself very nicely and scored. A former quarterback in high school in Jackson, Michigan, was actually recruited. The Toledo football team even took a look at him. With those very broad shoulders and good touch. Williams takes it in and makes it count. When Sheldon Williams showed you one of the reasons why he is so tough. He's, you figure he's far from the basket, so you don't really have to worry, but a very nice spin move gets himself in good position, draws the foul. This is a guy who can get to the basket if you force him out a few feet further than his normal position down there on the block. That was an excellent move. 
Curry actually one of the quicker guys inside for Toledo, and Williams went right around him. First foul on Curry. He comes down with a rebound. However, all that being said, Toledo has stayed within striking distance here. They really need to have a strong finish here in this last minute and 40 seconds of the first half. Payne going to the left hand and using the window, Payne. 38-29. Boy, that's another tough shot by Payne, the first one that's gone in the basket. Reddick. Triplet, over-anxious, lost it to Dockery. He smelled numbers and let it go. Belchione, love on the offensive glass. Well, the one-time preseason Packers slammed one home. 40 to 29. Boy, an offensive foul right there, an illegal screen by Curry, and you could see that coming. Stan Joplin disagrees. Asking his guys to play with it. Got to be stationary yeah, when he set that screen. Yeah. And it was out there for everyone to see. I thought for a moment he was upset with the call, but actually a little more upset with the foul given up by Curry. We don't shoot those anymore. <laughs> you, heard, <laughs> you heard Jamie Lucky saying we don't shoot those anymore. That's a team control foul. Yes. Not a, not, it's not a player control foul, but it's a team control foul. And it's been a couple of years since you've shot free throws in that situation, but you don't expect the coaches, even the great ones, to know all the rules. <laughs> Dockery with the undercut on Payne. Mike Krzyzewski's calling for a kicked ball. I think he's right. Could have been a fresh 35 there. Tim, keep in mind with screening, you have to be stationary on the screen. Watch Curry, number 32. As the guy comes, he moves right into him. That's a block, yeah. not a screen. You also have to give the guy enough space. You can't get right up next to him when he can't see the screen. And Curry with a mistake there. He was fine as long as he stayed stationary, but he did not. This is a tough young man, Payne. He spent a season playing the game with a broken wrist. Knows how to break the defense down. We've seen that and is uh, willing to take the tough shot. 40 to 31 with just under 50 seconds left. And a 30-second uh, timeout taken by Mike Krzyzewski. And we were talking earlier about Toledo and their place in the history of the Mid-America Conference and how close they've been winning 20-plus games, going to the NIT. They have had their moments. Ronnie Lester, remember that name? Played in a Final Four one year. Well, the season before, Stan Joplin, number 30, hit a buzzer beater to take out Iowa in the second round of the NCAAs in Bloomington. The last time the Rockets danced in the month of March in the NCAAs. Uh, There's Stan Joplin a few years later, coaching at his alma mater. It's got to mean a great deal to him. And you know, he talks to Judd Heathcote two or three times a week, as all of Judd's guys do, and has a number of stories to tell. Well, we were able to visit with Stan a little bit in the last couple of days, a, a very thoughtful, guy and he was talking about how he finally feels like he's got the Toledo program in the position that they need to be to compete. Reddick off the curl with a trade. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> it's tough to compete whether you're ready or not when J.J. Reddick is going to come off that screen and hit that shot. There's no defense for that. Payne on the dribble drive, draws the contact from Dockery, and we'll get back to the line. Third foul on Dockery. Well, don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll go to our Atlanta studios. Mike Goldberg, Larry Kindly, and Perry Clark will have uh, a plethora of hoop highlights to tell you about. And uh, Dan, you and I will hang around and analyze this one. And we'll listen to them, right? The analyst tonight is pretty easy. It's been Duke <laughs> intensity after those first four minutes. North Carolina won big against... Uh, Loyal of Chicago in game number one of our doubleheader today. When keep in mind, keep in mind that Toledo had the game to a, an eight-point game, took an ill-advised three-point shot, and now Duke has stretched it out to 12. Now, this is a pretty important defensive sequence for Toledo. 
Melchione. Loose ball. Time. Wrong guy got it. Run it. Well, right guy if you're Duke, wrong guy yeah. if you're Toledo, but <laughs> J.J. Reddick missed that one. From Toledo's perspective, it was definitely <laughs> the wrong guy. Loose ball situation, you don't want him to have it. But a 12-point lead for the Blue Devils in search of 700 against the upstarts from the Mid-America Conference. Let's take you back to Atlanta and Mike Goldberg. What's hot? Hooters hot! That's right, Hooters is hot for great food, fun, and cold beer. There's no place hotter than Hooters. Try the hot and light menu today. And win a trip to Miami for the Hooters International Swimsuit Pageant with me. Or watch it live with the Hooters girls. Now that's hot. For hot summer fun, this is Brooke Burke saying Hooters is what's hot. Hooters Magazine, available at newsstands today. through the world of your favorite films and original series at foxmoviechannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries and behind the scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona. His friend went to Nebraska. And their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels. FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to FoxCollegeSports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Duke is up by a dozen here at halftime over the Toledo Rockets. We talked a lot tonight about uh, going after 700 for Mike Krzyzewski, but this is the first ever road game against an ACC school since 1960, and the fact that Stan Joplin's team is in this game, only down 12 at the break, it's pretty meaningful for them, too. I really think it is. They started the game well, then they got hit by that big Duke run, but they were able to recover and stay in the game. Early in the game, it was a case of Toledo getting and making good shots. They got out in transition, broke down the Duke defense a little bit. Then the Blue Devils really turned up that defensive pressure here. You get the steal by Dockery, and he goes in for the layup. And then you had a steal by Nelson as he picks off the pass and goes in for the layup. Duke started getting the great opportunities, and they converted them. However, we mentioned Toledo kept battling. They actually had it to six points right at the end of the half before they missed an ill-advised three-pointer and Duke stretched it out to the 12-point lead. As you take a look at our staple stats in the first half, the key to the game was really the inability to hit the three-point shot for Toledo. They were one of eight. And when that defensive pressure picked up, Dan, they, they took a lot of quick shots. And then double team coming of triplet here at the outset. With the exception of Triplett, uh, who gets a traveling violation right there as the Duke pressure shows itself early. With the exception of Triplett, we really have not seen very solid performances from the rest of that 
very, very talented Toledo backcourt. Stan Joplin was confident in the ability of his backcourt players, and with the exception of Triplett, and a couple of nice plays by Keontae Howe, we really haven't seen that. Redick, Valencia again, a good block out, but just so much size, and the ability of Williams to get a hand on it, he's very frustrated, and you can imagine what it must be like. You're fundamentally sound, and then still unable to come away with a rebound. Duke had 12 offensive rebounds in the first half. And we were talking about Sheldon Williams' presence at one point. Amazing to think that he was six out of nine. The rest of the team, nine out of 33 to this point in the game. So as Larry Conley mentioned at halftime, he's the one constant, Dan, for this Duke team. You know what you're going to get from him. Benson with a face-up three. Sophomore, very effective, long and athletic. Alan Pinson. Well, Pinson is not a bad three-point shooter. He's now three of four shooting the threes on the season. That could be a matchup problem for a lot of Mac opponents once they get into league play. Boy, and Shavlik Randolph not able to get the shot off on the inside. Ewing feeds Williams. <laughs> the point that Coach Gay was making earlier today about Ewing to go along with Reddick and Sheldon Williams. Those three are very solid with this team. The rest of the chemistry still building. Valencia can't connect. Vinson tried to save it, but Reddick got it with the Velcro hands. Ewing goes crossover. Ho oh ho! Draws the foul. Almost got the finish to go with it. Justin Ingram picking up his second foul. Ewing did not shoot the ball very well in the first half, coming in averaging almost 20 points a game, one for seven in the first half. And we've seen here in the second half, he's made a little bit of an adjustment, has taken the ball to the basket, got an assist on the last Duke possession, and now at the free throw line. And that's really important. You've got to recognize sort of what's working and what's not. And just yeah. because you're not shooting the ball well from the outside, that doesn't mean you can't score, and it doesn't mean you can't contribute offensively. And you expect a veteran like Ewing to figure that out. Williams, the offensive board. Nelson trying to come away with the, the putback. Couldn't do it. Ingram on the dribble drive, using the glass. Boy, that was an impressive finish to that play, but Ingram missed Triplett, who was all alone down in the corner. It's been a problem, I think, for Toledo tonight. A little bit too much pounding the ball on the dribble by the point guards. It's almost as if they're expending so much energy, Dan, on the defensive end. They want to rush it once they get the ball back. Tim, and as Shavlik Randolph drives to the basket there and has his shot blocked by Pinson, I want to point out that Valencia, who you see, he goes by Valencia, and Valencia is being careful. We said that Valencia had three fouls in the first half. We want to correct ourselves. He only had two. That's now two blocks for Pinson yeah. in the game. And uh, Valencia, that's big. That's important. They changed. Officials changed that at halftime. You could see Pinson was ready to launch it. Randolph with a pickpocket act. Again, if Pinson's going to hold the ball out there, if he's going to shoot it, I think that's fine, but they do not want Pinson handling the ball that far from the basket on the dribble. Duke, Cole to open the second half, much as they were the first, one out of six. That comes to a quick halt as Ewing hits a three, and it's 49-36. When once again, you get the feeling that Toledo's climbing back in, they had it cut to 10, and then Ewing hits the big basket. Pinson, that's a block. Boy, and that's a break for Toledo right there. Again, Pinson with the ball near the top of the key, trying to drive all the way to the basket. That's an awfully difficult task for anybody, much less your 6'10 center. Randolph steps in there, tries to draw the charge. Now here's Pinson, just driving the ball. This is a situation where he needs to pull up. He gets a break there. That's one of those tough calls in basketball. Remember that you have to have both feet on the floor facing the dribbler and you have to have your guarding position established before the offensive player leaves the floor. Randolph grimacing in some pain, taken out and uh, Love checks in for him. Yeah, there's been so much attention given to Shavlik Randolph. I think one of the reasons because he's local, this is a national program and uh, 
He was a celebrated recruit from this area and much was expected of him. But people forget that uh, he's not been that healthy. He had obviously that hip problem and uh, trying to get well and come out of that. You know, Mike Krzyzewski said at the end of last year, particularly after he played well in the NCAA tournament, that maybe the issue with Shadlick was more psychological than physical. And once you get well, you're still not sure that your body can achieve what the mind conceives. Well, you've lost the confidence in your ability to achieve those things, Tim. Ready? He's stripped. Ingram with numbers has three on two. Gets it to Pinson. He's in no man's land, and he's rejected by Williams. Outstanding defensive play by the landlord. You see those passes completed so often, but those lob passes on the run are so difficult to throw accurate. That was not an accurate pass, and so Toledo had an opportunity that they couldn't convert. That'll be a hand check against uh, Ingram. No see, way he could stay with Reddick. Tim, and when you're trying to come back in a game like this, Toledo is just hanging around, staying down about 10, 11, 12 points. But when Stan Joplin's true crew trying to come back in the game, you've got to make the plays, the kind of plays that they just missed. We said before the game they had to start and they had to finish, and one of their problems has been finishing plays that they really need to convert. Ingram uh, leaves the game with three fouls. Kashif Payne back in the oh. game. Oh, and that's one that... You work on in practice. Ewing gets an easy one. 51-38. Four minutes gone by here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, second half. Duke stays in the man-to-man. -man. Both teams have been in man-to-man -man all night long. See, there's a lot of that dribbling out there by the point guard again. Triplet. Gets called with the foul. Goes against triplets. Ah, uh, the Rockets got duped on the inbounds play. 51-38 here at the Taj Mahal of college basketball. Tune into Fox Sports for the best sports coverage around. Then, let the new FoxSports.com on MSN take you beyond the field. Log on today for up-to-the-minute headlines, real-time scores on every page, hot sports opinions from your favorite Fox Sports personalities, tons of free video, cool interactive features, play fantasy games, and get everything you need to win with expert analysis from the sporting news. Experience a new world of sports. FoxSports.com on MSN. An all-new season of The Shield has critics raving. Beautiful. Glenn Close is not just a good fit, she's a great one. Wanna get this guy? Yeah. Michael Chiklis brings powerhouse intensity. If you've given the word and any cop gets hurt, you're gonna be spitting teeth. The Shield is more ferocious than ever. Close is simply magnificent. I gave you power, I gave you respect, so keep your mouth shut before you lose both. The Shield, Tuesdays, only on FX. Check local listings. The best damn sports show period, weeknights on FSN. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Major League Baseball on Fox. And he can keep on running to New York. That ball is gone. Your baseball memories live forever. Boston Red Sox are world champions. This year's premier events are only on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball, every Saturday on your local Fox station. We mentioned at the top of the show what a rigorous schedule it had been in uh, late November and December for Stan Joplin. We talked to him about that and uh, what it could mean to him once he gets into back play. I think we have a lot of potential. Um, we haven't gotten off the start that we would like because the competition has been tough and we've played a lot of games on the road. But I think we haven't played well. I think once we start to play well, I think we are, uh, you know, considered the top contenders. 
You know, you think about it, he fell behind 11 to 2 in game one, 14 to 4, then 21 6, 21 8 at home against Nevada before he got the first win. They've shown some resiliency even tonight. His team has not played well consistently tonight, yeah. but they have played well in spots, and to play well in spots in this atmosphere has to be encouraging, although a coach is never satisfied with any sort of moral victories. They like to come out and win games. And you heard him mention that they're playing a lot of games on the road. Well, that's because one of those mid-majors, boy, this is a nice oh, ball. Off the curl Ewing. Boy, that's, <laughs> that gets the crowd going. But as a mid-major who everybody thinks is going to have a good year, nobody's going to go and play him at Toledo. Yep. So if they're going to play these marquee games, they have to go on the road. And now they're in trouble. They've really got to get a couple of stops and a couple of baskets to stay in this one. Boy, and the Duke pressure just continues. Deontay Howell has that one deflected by Love. He was looking for Valencia, who was open on the baseline. Valencia, we mentioned, an outstanding offensive player, but he's 6'5", 240, and he's been battling inside against Sheldon Williams all night long, and that five or six-inch height advantage has been mostly in favor of Sheldon Williams, and he uses it there again. Well, Ewing and Sheldon Williams both hot, particularly Ewing here in the second half. Boy, this is a nice play. You get a couple of screens as Nelson comes off a couple, or excuse me, Ewing comes off a couple of times. Watch Nelson make the pass. This is a perfectly thrown ball. We showed you earlier that Toledo missed one of those in transition. That is a difficult pass to throw, but Nelson threw it very well. Ewing did a nice job using a couple of screens. I tell you, Dan, in watching uh, the rotation for Coach K tonight, he's used quite a bit of, uh, of Reggie Love. They, they really didn't know that they would get him. And defensively, he moves well, makes a solid contribution. And uh, they're looking for anyone to help keep Sheldon Williams out of foul difficulty, particularly once they get into conference play. One of the things that Mike Krzyzewski has said is he's really looking for guys who can be multi-purpose guys. Probably Daniel Ewing is the best example of that, the number of different spots he can play on the court. Lee Melchioni is another guy, and Reggie Love, he's not one of those multi-purpose guys. His job is to go in and bang, and he has done it very well. Payne can't get it to go. Loose ball taken down by Nelson. And that's an example of what Reggie Love can do. He didn't get that rebound, but he batted it out of the hands of Allen Pinson. So Duke is able to come up with it. Ewing and Williams with all of Duke's points in the second half. Benson, who was going after, he's already got a career high five blocks tonight. Picks up a goal tending here. Well, again, here's Daniel Ewing taking the ball hard to the goal. Now in college, it's allowed to hit the backboard and you can get it, but that ball hit the backboard and was coming down. And you can't touch the ball once it gets to its downward flight. B. Jagas back on the floor. Again, another tough shot. And a quick shot taken early. And an unforced error by the Blue Devils. And a mix up between Ewing and Reggie Love, and Toledo will get it back. A 12 0 spurt for the Blue Devils after a slow start. They were one out of six from the floor in the first few moments. Your image, really, of the first half. Ewing bailed Kashi Payne out of a, a carry that time by picking up the foul. That's his third. Second, obviously, he's picked it up offensively, as you can see right there in the second half. But I'll tell you what, the Duke defense, you wonder why the point guards from Toledo are spending so much time dribbling the ball. Well, it's because they've got no place to throw it. The other Duke defenders are doing a great job denying the passing lanes. Payne with a good look inside to Valencia. And uh, again, excellent work by Pinson, just unable to finish. But that's the problem you have when you're 6'5", going against the 6'10 guy. Valencia got inside. That's a shot that he'll normally make, but trying to stick it up through the arms of Shelf Williams is just a very, very difficult pass. Dockery with the dump down to Williams. Oh, what a move! Body. How good is that? Well, the great thing was they came with some pressure, and he saw it. He protected the ball. He waited till the pressure cleared, and then he made a nice move to the basket. The lead climbs to 21. 
And what air was in the Toledo balloon has been sucked out in this last five minute sequence. Now they started the game all right, but they've really started the second half poorly. Reddick followed by Lowe. Wow. So I think I'll put the football career on hold, come back to Duke, make a contribution. <laughs> Time out. Toledo. The landlord's got to feel good about this one. Boy, what, he sees the pressure. The pressure doesn't get him. Valencia tries to draw the charge, and then the left-handed shot. And Mike Krzyzewski has got to be pleased. He may even be in love with this. <laughs> Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries, and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th century Fox movies. FoxMovieChannel.com now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner, back at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And it's a 16 to nothing run that the Blue Devils are in the midst of as they catapult to a 23 point cushion against Toledo. Actually a very impressive performance by Duke after that slow start coming out of the exam break. Always a very difficult task for a college basketball team. You just, you get your normal rhythm disrupted. Your practice time is a little messed up. Guys' minds are obviously on things other than playing basketball, and it's just tough to recover your edge. The quest for uh, Stan Joplin's team now is to play as if they don't know what the scoreboard says. And boy, that was tough Duke defense. Toledo handling the ball 30 feet away from the basket, the shot clock at eight. That's not generally a good formula for offensive efficiency. Inside. Nice work again. Good crisp passing to Nelson. And it's an 18 to nothing run. Boy, I have been impressed with Nelson's contribution tonight. He has done a nice job passing the ball, handling the ball, and powering inside. Valencia is going right into a Blue Devils roadblock. Valencia has performed very well thus far this season against really big opponents, but he has just been overmatched against Sheldon Williams tonight. Five blocks for Sheldon. Reddick in traffic. Another rejection by Pinson. That's his sixth of the night. He's had a lot of deflections in the game. Oh, how about that pick by Love? Out to Nelson. And the kick by Payne. Only way to stop that one. So a fresh 35 for Coach K's team. It's only a matter of time. Krzyzewskiville will be celebrating 700. Hold on for the greatest thrill ride in sports.
six laps to go. Sports Show period, weeknights on FSN. is not just a good fit, she's a great one. Want to get this guy? Yeah. Michael Chiklis brings powerhouse intensity. If you've given the word and any cop gets hurt, you're gonna be spitting teeth. The shield is more ferocious than ever. Close is simply magnificent. I gave you power, I gave you respect, so keep your mouth shut before you lose both. The Shield, Tuesdays, only on FX. Check local listings. Another milestone in the making, 700. Do you remember 400, Dan? It happened with Chris Collins and company. That was against Iowa, one of the assistants uh, on this team. And then that big comeback against uh, Dean Smith's team on his birthday, Wojo with the hug here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And you were on hand in the ACC tournament when they got 600. Mike Dunleavy and Battier leading the way as he claimed 600. We've talked about it a couple of times tonight, Tim, just an extremely impressive legacy by Mike Krzyzewski. That's sustained success, obviously, over an extremely long period of time in the country's toughest basketball conference. Randolph, Nelson the rebound for the Rockets with a quick outlet to Ingram. Howell has it rejected. You know the other interesting aspect, Dan, about those numbers? You see the staff, Johnny Dawkins, of course, a part of another Duke era, Wojciechowski, Chris Collins. It's a, it's a family here at Krzyzewskiville, and that's, I mean, gone are the days of uh, Mike Gray types being assistant coaches. Former players are going to be a part of this staff and hopefully move into head coaching jobs later on. And Johnny Dawkins has turned down a head coaching opportunity. Randolph. Dockery tries to save it, was on the inline. And you want to know one reason why you just can never count Duke out, why you might say they have fewer really talented players than they have in the past. A play right there is a perfect illustration. Here they're up by 23 points. There's no reason to go that hard after that ball. But Dockery goes and tries to get it. That kind of intensity is what wins your games. Ingram gives it up to Milson. There are times when you almost look at Toledo and you say, normally you're going to take it right to the basket, but against Duke, maybe a pull-up wouldn't be a bad idea. The closer they get to the basket, the uh, harder it is to score. But uh, Williams is off the floor right now, and that helps a bit. Ewing. Nelson with the pick. David McClure back on the floor, making an impact. Actually came away with that steal. Ewing stop and go right to Randolph. Melchioni, McClure, Randolph, Dockery, and Ewing on the floor for Duke. Triplet gives it up. Rejected by Randolph. There's the point that you made, Tim. Tough getting the ball inside, yep. and that gives Duke the opportunity for a run out basket. Dockery with the chippy. 67 to 40. Ingram. Boy, you start taking quick shots against Duke. That can be really a recipe for disaster. Kluwer trying to work give and go with Randolph. Good defensive work by 
Toledo to cut him off. Good patience by Duke, not forcing anything. There's the dump down to Randolph again. Excellent entry pass by Knockery. But great patience by Randolph. He got a couple of entry passes, didn't have scoring opportunities nearly as attractive as that one. Passed the ball back out. Lots of times it's hard for big guys, particularly struggling big guys, to be patient like that. And finally, Antoine Curry ends the drought. And it's been a long one for Toledo. 69-43. And signs of fatigue entering into the Rockets now. You can really tell. But I think you can all also really tell the talent that's out there for the Toledo Rockets. Oh, yeah. This is a fine basketball team. And they're not really, as, as you heard Stan Joplin say, playing particularly well at the moment. But boy, when they put it all together, I think they're going to be awfully tough. I agree. And by the way, speaking of exams, they begin tomorrow at Toledo. Deontay Howell. Gets the contact and the foul. And the Duke Blue Devils, the defensive pressure and inside play, really important. Shavlik Randolph with the block there. That starts the fast break. Sean Dockery can get it down the court and score easily. And then Randolph takes the nice entry pass on the inside. It's Dockery to Randolph. Randolph with the power move to the basket. Toledo has had no real solution for that inside play, and that's why Duke leads. I am so tired of overpaying for health insurance. Wow, I pay a lot less, and that covers me and my family. If you're self-employed or an individual looking for affordable health insurance for yourself and your family, do what I did. Call Mega Life and Health Insurance for a free quote. I got individual attention from a licensed Mega Health agent who tailored a plan to match my needs and was way more than affordable. And unlike those questionable discount plans, this is real insurance. I got better coverage at a better rate and I can choose my own doctor from their extensive network. Now get this, you can't be singled out for a rate increase or cancellation. So, do what I did. Call Mega Life and Health Insurance for your free quote. You have absolutely no obligation except the one to yourself, your family, and your business. Call 800-646-6105 for your free mega affordable health insurance quote. Call 800-646-6105. One by one. They step forward. A nurse. A teacher. A homemaker. And lives are saved. But the problem is enormous. Every three seconds, one person dies. Another three seconds. One more. The situation is so desperate in parts of Africa. Asia. Even America. That aid groups. Just as they did for the tsunami. Are uniting. As one. Acting. As one. We can beat extreme poverty. Starvation. AIDS. But we need your help. One more person. Letter. Voice. Will mean the difference between life and death. For millions of people. Please join us. By working together. Americans have an unprecedented opportunity. We can make history. We can start to make poverty history. One. By one. By one. Please visit one at this address. We're not asking for your money. We're asking for your voice. The best damn sports show, period. Join the guys for the most outrageous late-night sports show television's ever seen. Weeknights on FSN. Next Sunday, Pac-10 College Hoops returns to FSN. 12th ranked North Carolina State taking on number 16 Washington in an early season showdown between national powers. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific only on FSN. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner, Duke by 26. You know, last year we saw NC State play host to Washington in a wonderful game here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Played uh, late in the season in late February. It was the last loss Washington had before they won seven straight and managed to get an NCAA at-large bid. And it was sort of the coming out party for Nate Robinson. I think certainly in terms of a national television audience, I agree with you. Washington, a winner today over Loyola Marymount, and I just, that, that will be an excellent game next week with NC State. Oh, by the way, Julius Hodge is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting with Julius Hodge. He's a guy who's recognized nationally for his ability, but maybe not as much around the ACC, a little bit overshadowed by some other guys here, at least in terms of preseason predictions. 
Yeah, how about Justin Gray of Wake Forest? There's another young man that, uh, stop and think about it, first team all ACC. He's overshadowed by a kid that was third team all ACC last year, Chris Paul. Nice work by Dockery. 71 45. There's just not enough room for all of the headline players in the Atlantic Coast Conference, at least not early on in the season. Boy, Duke maintains the defensive pressure. Ingram. That's another example. He draws the foul this time. But there, that's one of, another one of those situations where you're almost telling the guard, pull up, take the 10-footer. More often times than not, the ball's been rejected and it's going It's very difficult to get the ball all the way to the basket against the Duke Blue Devils. Ingram fortunate to get the foul on that occasion. Demarcus Nelson got the foul. Ingram, the Mac freshman of the year. Talking about the ACC, this is just amazing. Well, you're talking about great players in the ACC. And when you have great players, generally you have very good teams. Interestingly enough there, look right here. Those teams right there, Wake Forest, North Carolina, Duke, NC State, known around here as the Big Four, the first time since 1948-49 season that you've had four teams in the Big Four, all ranked in the top 12. Seven ACC teams in the top 25. That's only the second time in the history of the conference that has happened. Back in the uh, pre-politically correct days, we would have said, Tobacco Road is smoking. <laughs> There's a loose ball. Numbers again for Toledo. Howell stripped by Ewing. Quick outlook to the landlord. What a great Protected hustle by, by Pinson. In stereo. <laughs> that was really a nice play by Pinson. You know, we talked earlier about the Duke Blue Devils hustling up and down the court. Well, these guys are down by 26 points, but Pinson comes flying in to block the shot. That is just a really nice play. Now, Demarcus Nelson finishes up and draws the foul, but Pinson really lays it all out there to catch Sheldon Williams. Great, great hustle play by Pinson. He's rejected seven. I mean, he is... Um, Played very well on both ends of the floor. Duke is going to attack it. They're going to take the ball at the basket, and so Pinson's had a lot of opportunities, and he's done very well on the inside, not fouling, but blocking the shots. Demarcus Nelson, um, another one of those guys that can play several different positions on the floor. Misses both at the stripe, and Pinson claims the rebound. Ingram. Feeds nice work. Curry getting inside. Boy, that looked like what we saw early in the game from Toledo, the ability to get out in transition. And a couple of times, Ingram has shown very good ability to see the floor in that transition game. As Williams takes it in, he's fouled. Deontay Howell got a piece of him there. And Sheldon Williams is a guy who has been a dominant force for the Duke Blue Devils tonight. Simply no answer for him in there for the Rockets of Toledo. Close to the basket, the spin move right there. 18 points thus far. He's going to the line to get uh, an attempt at a couple more of those 18 points, a season high. 14 rebounds as well. 15, excuse me. Yeah, he has 15 of the 45 for the Blue Devils. Toledo has 28 as a team. Reddick, pump fake and a beauty. Boy, I tell you what, you've got to get out there and try to defend that shot. The best you can do when he runs open like that is to force him to put the ball on the deck. Reddick did stay behind the line and just drilled it. That makes him almost impossible to defend. You know, the other thing about J.J. is he's improved in so many other areas. Ingram can't connect. Even if he's having a bad shooting night, Dan, he still makes incredible contributions to his team. Another stroke. This time off the iron, loose ball, last touched by Duke. Well, he missed that one, but again, the ability to get rid of the defender, and you'll see it right here. Watch him, the fake gets rid of the defender. That's tough to do because you've got to not, you've got to keep your pivot foot so you don't walk. You get the fake, you get the dribble, get yourself set again, and drill it. Boy, he's dangerous. Valencia checks back into the game, and Curry leaves for Toledo. 74-47, four and change remaining. On Coach K's court, here at uh, 
Cameron Indoor Stadium. Number 700 will be coming his way. Ingram, nice look into Howell. I think the Toledo Rockets just need to get home. Their flying charter, which is something they don't normally do, but they begin their exams tomorrow. They just need to get a uh, string of games at home. As we mentioned, it's tough to do. They're a pretty good. Oh, Randolph right by Pinson. That's pretty good. Right there, Randolph didn't get the start tonight. I think that he's shown a little bit more offensive aggressiveness. I, I think he knew tonight he needed to show up. And he has since coming off the bench. Powell. One of the few times that Toledo has been able to get the ball all the way to the basket against the set defense. But with a guy like Randolph, sometimes you don't start him, and that's a message, hopefully a motivating message. And certainly it appears that Chandler Randolph has taken the message in the spirit that it was intended. He now has 10 points. Dockery Ewan lost that one on the way up. He was trying to go with a wraparound move. Howell. In traffic, fouled by Williams. 3.06 remaining. 700 is about to be served up to the Cameron Crazies. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries, and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th century Fox movies. FoxMovieChannel.com Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona. His friend went to Nebraska. And their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels. FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to FoxCollegeSports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. They lurk in the water, waiting for a fight. It's the run for the FLW Championship. Get caught in the action, emotion, and adrenaline. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN. 25-point lead for the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of lines, but I'm going to stay away from it. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski's... Uh, Looking at uh, pure 700 tonight. And the only thing juiced up about this 700 <laughs> is the intensity that Mike Krzyzewski's leadership has been able to generate from his players over the years. And obviously, you don't win 700 games without a string of great, great players. And they've certainly had them here at Duke. Ewing feeds love in traffic. Pinson, you know, this young man's got a career high seven blocks tonight, Dan. Third most in school history. And has uh, gotten them against a taller, bigger, stronger front line from Duke. He's played well. He sure has. His offensive numbers not as impressive as some of the Duke guys. Pinson with seven points. Tough shots like that makes it uh, more difficult to help your shooting percentage. Deontay Howell is checking with our cameraman. Dip, dip. Are you okay? He gave him the thumbs up. There we go. Mike is okay. It's not the only one in the building. Number five, Rochelle Russell replaces 
for 20. That has become a long night for Stan Joplin and his Toledo Rockets, but as I as we mentioned before, they have shown flashes in this game. They have played in spurts where they have looked pretty good and I think flashed the potential that you heard Stan Joplin talk about a little bit earlier. Mel Keone. Randolph saves it. And Valencia gets the reach in foul. Let's take a look back at that Chrysler game summary and the things that you were looking for in tonight's game. Well, we talked about Toledo having to start well, and they did on the 10 to 2 run, but they struggled in the second half. You can see Duke outscoring them in the second half. And then we talked about Duke making baskets. The overall percentage for Duke, not that great, but keep in mind that Sheldon Williams, 8 for 12, he has been the guy. It has been Basketville around the basket with Sheldon Williams inside tonight. And Shadler Grandolph, who didn't start the game, now has 11 points. And he has a couple of blocked shots as well. A much better effort tonight by Randolph. And in all the years of coaching for Mike Krzyzewski, whether at West Point or here, those shot treatment timeouts, <laughs> he, was, he was as ferocious in that huddle the first time out that was taken at 10-2 as I've ever seen him. And his team responded immediately, a 17-1 run, and really, they never looked back. Tim, you hear a lot of talk, and I think it's appropriate talk about people who are leaders and whether the team has a leader or not, who's going to fill the leadership role. But when you come right down to it, the leader of a team has to be the coach. And Mike Krzyzewski, certainly, over his 25 years here at Duke and his couple of years before that at Army, has shown himself to be an absolutely outstanding leader of the young men who play college basketball for him. Johnny Dawkins, whom you saw there next to him, was has been on hand for 316 of those uh, soon-to-be 700 victories that Coach K has had here at Duke. Melchione. You know, and another thing that Duke has to be pleased about is the guys that they were relying on to come off the bench. Randolph commits a foul right there. But when you're talking about Melchione, McClure, Love, and Nelson, those guys for Mike Krzyzewski coming into this game averaging 18 points and 10 rebounds per game on the season, and they have improved those numbers tonight. So a little bit of versatility being shown by the Duke Blue Devils. This is why there's such a reaction. Uh, <laughs> the foul did go against Randolph, but I think he got the brunt of the pain in the foul. And don't forget next Sunday night. Sunday night hoops uh, returns with uh, North Carolina battling Virginia Tech. Florida State will look to upset number 23 Maryland. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern noon Pacific. Patrick Davidson on the floor, number 41 for the Blue Devils. 90 seconds and counting until. The 700 plateau is reached. Patrick Johnson is also out there on the 51. Setting the pick for Davidson. And the bump will go against Rache Russell. I've known Mike for a long time, Dan, and we've talked on many occasions, you and I, with him. The glory era of ACC basketball really goes back to the 80s in his mind during the time in which he came into the league. Bobby Crimmins at Georgia Tech, Jim Valvano at North Carolina State, Dean had it rolling in Chapel Hill. That 86 team, his first Final Four team to this day, he says, was his favorite team because it uh, really was the foundation of uh, the many Final Fours that would come in the future. There's a special thrill about getting it started, getting it going. Loose ball taken away by Melchione. With all the banners that hang in here, Final Fours, championships, Retired numbers. It's been an incredible legacy. The 100th year of Duke basketball. Mike Krzyzewski's 25th year as the coach. The fans now chanting 700. We 
know they want either Davidson or Jackson to score. Shot clock violation, and the ball goes over to Toledo. The other outstanding contribution that uh, Mike is making is that of uh, philanthropy. That's he and his wife, Mickey, give back to this area so very much. One of the real reasons I believe they felt it necessary to stay here in uh, Durham, North Carolina, when he disdained the idea of going to the Los Angeles Lakers. But he told me tonight, he said, well, I stayed because I could stay in a place like Duke. It means a lot more when you've got this kind of place to say that you're the head coach of. And um, you can certainly understand and appreciate that. Tim, and he has helped make it that kind of place. No question. Number 700 for Mike Krzyzewski. 82-54 over the Toledo Rockets. They will have a very brief presentation for him at uh, midcourt, but he'll be very quick and I'm sure quite humble. But I think that this is just uh, the first of uh, many milestones maybe this season and beyond that we'll see from Coach K. Tim, he is certainly a sufficiently thoughtful person yes. that he understands what this means. He knows about the history of basketball and the history of Duke. And he is a person who will take a little bit of time to reflect. I don't know that I've ever met Dan, a coach that understands the human condition of the modern day athlete any more than Mike. Now he certainly expresses himself well about that. You can see how excited the, the players are to be a part of this. Other coaches in NCAA Here's Mickey, Mike's wife. He's a grandfather now. A meaningful conclusion for Dan Bonner, Tim Brando, saying so long from Cameron Indoor Stadium, where a little piece of history came along Tobacco Road. But you have to be a great coach. We've, we've been blessed at Duke University for 25 years to have the best coach in the country. that played for coach over the years to amass those 700 wins. We've got Daniel Ewing and J.J. Redick representing all those players as captain of this year's team to present the game ball to coach. In my heart, that this is not going to be the last ball I'm going to give to this guy. I think there'll be a lot more of them. So thank you all for being here, Coach. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joe. L listen, you know, first of all, uh, to coach at Duke, 
has been like a dream. Um, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I'm doing what I love to do at the best place that you can do it. Um, It has, to be, it has to be quite apparent that you don't win that many games without having a lot of great players. I've had great players over the years, and a milestone like this, I think a lot of the players all over the country, including these kids right here, you know, they feel part of it. And that's the beauty of Duke, is that we've always felt like it was a team effort. Besides thanking my family, two of my daughters, my wife, Mickey, and my grandson. There, there are two people this afternoon, uh, I don't know, I, I don't reflect that much, but I reflected this afternoon. Dick, Dick, I, since you be, I use reflect now, all right? Uh, it's, I think it's better English, I hope it is. Uh, the two people besides my family, and of course God who's given me the opportunity to do this, that I really want to thank publicly. First of all, I want to thank the youngest coach to have ever won 700 games because he gave me an opportunity to play for him, coach for him, and learn what it was to be passionate and, and prepared. And there's been no greater teacher for me than Bob Knight. Um, There must be something about those ex-Army coaches. Uh, the second person I'd like to thank is Tom Butters. Uh, Tom, when I was 32 years old and got the job here, uh, I got it because Tom Butters believed in me. Uh, we all look for people who will give us opportunities but we also look for people who will believe in us. He didn't stop there, though. What he also did then was support me. You know, my first three years here at Duke, we were 38 and 47. Uh, I don't think I would have ever reached 700 in, at that pace. Um, or I would have, but I would have had about 1,000 losses. Um, but Tom Butters and this administration as has every administration, as long as I've been here, they've been part of the team. You know, I think Duke serves as a great example of the way it should be, and I'm the result of it. You, know, you don't do it alone, you do it because of great people, and great people are attracted to this great institution. Thanks a lot, and hopefully we get 701 on Tuesday. Thank you. X marks a daring pursuit of the unknown. Unpredictable, unforgettable. X marks questions that need to be explored. Stories that need to be told. X marks the destination for adventures so gripping you never let go. X marks Explorer Sundays, only on the National Geographic Channel. Dare to explore. They lurk in the water, waiting for a fight. It's the run for the FLW Championship. Get caught in the action, emotion, and adrenaline. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN.